Hello fellow millennials, I'm going to make the 20s the best years of your life. What I'm going to share in this video will not only ensure that you enjoy your 20s, but also ensure that by the time you're 30, you're going to be excited for what's going to come next. Picture yourself in your 30s. You're excited, you're happy, you're confident. You look back on your 20s and you say, man, I did everything that I needed to do to get me exactly to where I am today, and I'm so happy that I did everything that I did to get here. In the book, The Defining Decade, author Megan Jay talks about how 20-somethings would come into her counseling office and would just talk about how their lives were not going according to plan, that their 20s were supposed to be fulfilling and fun, yet they weren't liking the jobs that they were getting and they weren't feeling like they were making much progress. Everyone seems to be happier. Meg claims that the 30s are not actually the new 20s. And as a matter of fact, here in our 20s, these are the most important years of our lives that determine who we become over time. And it is from Meg's book that this first tip actually comes. Use the strength of weak ties. This statement might shock you, but it is absolutely true. It is the people with whom we are the least connected who offer us the most opportunities. While it's our close friends and family that we often associate the most with, it's the people that we don't associate with very much that actually offer the greatest potential to significantly influence our lives. Think of it this way. If you want to move out of your current position or you want to move into a new field, you're going to have to likely reach out to somebody you don't know very well, someone outside your immediate circle of friends. It could be a past colleague, a coworker, a friend from school. I mean, especially after just leaving the academic world, you should have an entire list of people who you've associated with. One quick LinkedIn search, one quick Facebook search is all it takes to find countless friends and colleagues that are in positions all across the United States, all across the world, who might be able to give you the extra in that you need to get to where you want to go. One simple message, one simple phone call could be all that it takes to get you to work at the position that you've always wanted or at the right company that you've always wanted. And it's surprising what happens when we reach out to somebody who we haven't talked to in a while. We catch up, ask for an interview, ask for a referral, you'll be surprised just how willing to help your friends and colleagues from many years back are to help you out. So if you're stuck in a position or in a rut and you wanna get into a new field or a new position at a new company, who among your weak ties is at where you wanna be? And be sure to reach out. I can promise you they'll be glad you did. The second big tip is to prioritize meta skills over technical skills. Now what are meta skills? You've probably never heard of those before and that's because they're not taught in the academic world. You see meta skills are skills that essentially help improve all the other areas of your life. They actually improve the technical skills that you acquire later on. These are skills like confidence, optimism, focus, negotiation, leadership. These skills help influence all the other areas of your life, and even things like meditation are a meta skill because it teaches you how to be more disciplined, more focused, and reduce stress overall. Think for a moment if the first book that you read taught you how to read other books twice as fast. That means you could either read twice the amount of books or read the same amount in half the time. Believe it or not, people are actually learning how to read three times faster. Now this gives you a significant advantage and this is just one example. And think what would happen if you learned the art of confidence or persuasion. You would significantly increase your chances to land a higher paying job and deepen relationships within your own life. And while typing 50 words a minute might look good on a resume, the ability to have a positive attitude and focus at work has a much better chance of landing you a promotion and getting you higher paid than the latter. And besides, while technical skills might lead to money, it's the meta skills that are largely responsible for the quality of your life outside of work and your own personal happiness. The third tip is when it comes to friends, make sure to focus on depth and not count. A good friend of mine once asked, would you rather have 100 pennies or four quarters? Sure, it's the same amount of money, but which is the bigger hassle? You see, when we're in school, it's easy to have a ton of friends. You see them all the time, you see them running around the classrooms, but as you get older, people start to prioritize their lives in different ways, and we start to lose contact, and it becomes much, much harder to have the time to keep all those relationships going, to have the same level of depth with all of those friends. So you, you end up really spreading yourself thin across all of your friends, and you end up not having real, deep, meaningful relationships with anyone. 
So take a moment right now to write down the five people who you want to be friends with for the rest of your life. The people who you really want to deepen those relationships with. These are the people who you'll depend upon in your time of need, who always have your back. They should be the ones who influence you in a positive way. So think about somebody who either inspires you, who you want to be like, who you just really trust, who has good values. Make sure to add them to the list. Studies do show that we are often like the people who we associate the most with. So make sure you choose your friend group carefully because you'll be surprised after five years just how similar you and your friends actually are. My fourth big tip is to get rejected more, not less. Zha Zhang, the author of Rejection Proof, writes about a story when he was working at a marketing position and it wasn't giving him fulfillment, he wasn't enjoying his work. He noted that it was his fear of rejection from the people that he cared about the most that kept him from doing the things that he actually wanted to do with his life. From there, he set out on a journey to get rejected for a hundred days, that he would go find people and ask absurd questions that would guarantee him a no. So he would find strangers and ask for things like, may I borrow a hundred dollars? Or he would go to Costco and say, can I speak over the intercom? Of course, he received no's, but that was his goal. What happened at the end of those 100 days was absolutely astounding. You see, not only did he get a massive following on his blog post, but he also started his own million dollar company, wrote the book, and then also began giving lectures at big businesses. You see, when we actually desensitize ourselves to rejection, we accept it for what it actually is. It's just an event that actually could motivate you to do even better. Even at work, you have to risk rejection. Even if you're in a position that doesn't deal with sales or marketing, if you want to raise, if you want a promotion, you have to ask. And if you're going to ask, there's a chance of rejection. Even though studies show that 85% of the time when you ask for a raise, you at least get something. Rejection will be present throughout your entire life. You can either have some of it or you can have a lot of it. And what you'll find is the vast majority of successful people have a ton of rejection because that's what helped them get to where they are. So learning to accept rejection for what it is, learning how to deal with it and turn it into a positive is one of the best decisions that you could ever make for your life. And the final tip that I have for you is to invest in yourself. If you were to ask a friend what's the best investment in today's economy, they would say something like stocks or bonds or real estate or Tesla or gold, silver. They would name something like that. But the reality is the best investment you could make is in yourself because you are the money making machine. If Warren Buffett hadn't spent so much time understanding investment strategy, he probably would not know how to make very much money in the stock market. It's the knowledge that actually got him to where he is today. Investing in yourself is the best possible investment to make that's pretty much risk free is because you control your destiny. You can control your actions and what you do with that knowledge. Your decision to learn real estate, to learn investing strategies, or to learn how to do a startup is actually what will net you the most amount of money in the long run. But you can also get other currencies out of investing in yourself like more energy, more happiness, more confidence, confidence. These are the things that come through experience and investing in online courses and practicing and gathering new information that you've never heard of before. I mean, if you invest $15 in a meditation course that reduces the amount of stress that you have in your life by 50%, that's a pretty worthwhile investment. And while you can't control the return on a stock, you can control the return on yourself. By watching this video, you have in fact invested in yourself. And I just want to encourage you to keep up with your learning and development. And if you learned something from this video, either be sure to like it or share it with somebody. That way they can get the benefit from it as well. My promise to you is to continue providing content that will help you get the most out of life while still enjoying it too. If you want to be a part of the journey, be sure to subscribe to the channel as we shoot to get over 5,000 subscribers. So your subscription is welcomed and I will see you on the next video.